Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. The moon's surface creates a challenging environment. First off, there is no breathable air and the atmospheric pressure is unhabitable. Second, and even more challenging, is the temperature swings on the moon. Temperatures on the moon can range between a daytime average of 123 degrees Celsius to minus 233 degrees Celsius at night. The lunar south pole, however, has an average temperature of around minus 13 degrees Celsius, making it the ideal location for a lunar base. But there's another major challenge, and that is radiation. The moon does not have magnetic and atmospheric shielding to protect it from cosmic rays and solar particle events. The dangers of the various kinds of radiation vary from long-term negative health effects, if you're lucky, to death shortly after exposure. There was a study done on the cause of death of astronauts. It found that 43% of Apollo astronauts' cause of death was due to cardiovascular disease, which is around four times higher than other astronauts. In the coming years, scientists from around the world will be working on overcoming these challenges. This is because the moon has become a popular target destination since water ice was discovered in the southern polar region. There are a handful of countries around the world working to send astronauts to the moon, with the United States looking to return in 2024. And back in April, President Trump signed an executive order that supports the mining of the moon's resources. Indeed, the long-term human presence on the moon appears to be inevitable. But moon bases might be totally different from what you imagine them to be. When you imagine a moon base, it probably looks something like this. Space agencies have been developing concepts for moon bases for decades. These images here are from the Moon Village concept developed by ESA in 2015. The concept involves deploying inflatable habitats and then using 3D printing robots to construct protective layers around them. The inflatable habitats would obviously contain breathable air and habitable pressure, and the outer layer would protect the habitat from temperature swings if necessary, along with radiation. The robotic 3D printers would use materials already on the moon, namely the regolith on the surface. While I imagine the first moon bases and small outposts would be on the surface, I believe majority of the habitable space on the moon will eventually be established below the surface. Researchers have been learning about lava tubes since they've been discovered on the moon that are insanely larger than lava tubes found on Earth. The largest lava tubes on Earth are around 40 meters in diameter. The moon, on the other hand, contains lava tubes that have diameters that are likely between 500 to 900 meters. They're large enough to fit entire skyscrapers inside them. So these lava tubes can serve as a protective layer of moon bases the size of small cities. Inhabitants will be protected from various radiation along with small meteors. And the scientists also believe the tubes likely contain water ice and other useful chemicals. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that the entire tubes would be able to be pressurized. You see, the openings of the lava tubes can be as wide as a football field. And even if engineers manage to seal the opening, there will be the possibility of air leaks elsewhere throughout the tube. That being said, the tubes provide large spaces protected from extreme temperature shifts, radiation, and micrometeor impacts. What's more, they have stable temperatures year-round inside at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Indeed, the tubes solve most of the challenges for providing a habitable environment on the moon. All that is left is simply constructing pressurized structures with the breathable air. But there's still a lot of research that needs to be done before we have an idea about feasibility. This is why lava tubes are what I most look forward to when astronauts start exploring the moon again. The concept of subterranean habitats in space has been gaining more attention lately, especially after SpaceX president commented about it. Shotwell mentioned that SpaceX might leverage the technology being developed by the Boring Company to help construct subterranean habitats on Mars. And if Boring machines are eventually used on Mars, you can reasonably assume that they will be used on the moon. Again, there's still so much to learn about the tubes to determine if they are feasible, but the potential would be great. It would be so cool to have an entire subterranean lunar city inside them one day. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.